Conquering signal to noise ratio is the name of the game when it comes to astrophotography. And Robin Glover's smart histogram within SharpCat Pro makes easy work of this. And you can do it with just a couple of clicks of a mouse and just a few minutes of your time. Hey everyone, it's Tony with Hidden Light Photography. And so far with Robin Glover's smart histogram within SharpCat Pro, We've learned how to do the sensor analysis so that then the smart histogram will work with your camera. And I've also demonstrated how to use it. But now it's time to take a deeper dive in because what if SharpCap's uh, smart histogram recommends an exposure time that's just not feasible? Like what if your mount just isn't capable of 10 minute, 15 minute exposures? And on top of that, think about this. With long exposures like that, even if your mount is capable of it and you get a cloud wisp or a plane or something that interferes with that frame and you have to start throwing out frames, which happens, you're losing a lot of integration time. So we're going to take a little bit of a deeper dive into this and I'm going to show you what you need to do in order to uh, lower that recommended exposure time and still be able to take full advantage of the maximized signal to noise ratio. So let's head over and get started. Before we jump into the smart histogram, there's a couple of things I want you to be aware of. When you're looking at the smart histogram, on the left, you're gonna see minimum exposure, maximum exposure. This is where you select the minimum exposure that you'll allow and the maximum exposure that you'll allow. I leave mine at default. The program does very well. I don't think that you'll have any issues leaving that at default. Next, to the right of that, you're going to see total stacking time. Now, total stacking time is your total integration time. Even if you go multiple nights on a target, this is going to be the total integration time that you're going to spend across all of the nights. And remember, the more integration time you have, the better the signal to noise ratio. And integration time is the total time of all of your subframes added up. In other words, if you have 10 10 second subframes, that's a total integration time of 100 seconds. Right above that, you're going to see read noise limit. This is a percentage that you will allow or accept over the minimum capable noise limit that your sensor coupled with your total integration time is capable of. In other words, if that combination is capable of a minimum noise limit of a factor of 10 and you choose a read noise limit of 10%, that means that you will accept a minimum noise limit of a factor of 11. And as you can see, that's really not that much. That is nothing that post-processing cannot handle. You are essentially adding very minimal noise to your image. And your read noise limit goes 1%, 3%, 5%, 10%, and so on. And I'll show you how even just a minimal uh, adjustment in that makes a huge difference in your recommended exposure time. Next is aim for, and that is either going to be unity gain or max dynamic range. Unity gain is going to give you the absolute best signal to noise ratio, whereas max dynamic range is more of a balance between brightness and noise and it could give you a higher gain setting to brighten up that image a little bit but remember the more gain the more noise next is going to be at the top and that is measure brightness of and you'll have red green blue and darkest i don't recommend using darkest i would use one of the three color channels now keep in mind if you're using a filter that does not have a strong or prominent signal through one of those colors, do not use that color. You want to use a color 
that your filter is prominent in. Now let's head over and see this in action. So to use SharpCap Smart Histogram, make sure that your camera is disconnected from any other imaging software that you might be using, and then go ahead and connect it in SharpCat. And then take a quick framing shot. Make sure that you're polar aligned, in focus, and your target is also centered where you want it to be. Now, what we're gonna do is go to Tools, Histogram, click on the little brain, that'll bring up your smart histogram. Now, it's also important to have the filter that you're gonna be using installed at this time. Now, if your filter is primarily a red channel and blue channel, and there's not much green, make sure to select whichever color channel is going to be uh, more present in that filter. So what we're going to do from here, minimum exposure time is the minimum exposure that you want it to do. Maximum is going to be the maximum. And then your integration time, total stacking time. Remember, exposure time is different than integration time. So let's say that we wanted 10 hours total integration time on M101, which is what I'm on right now, and it could be any target that you're using. Whatever your total integration time that you're looking for, that's what you're going to select in this drop down. I have my uh, aim for set to unity gain instead of uh, maximum dynamic range. And then from there, once we have our channel, we'll run through each of these really quick. Once we have these set, we're just gonna hit measure. Now, it's important to have your sensor analysis done. That's the only way that this is gonna work. And I'll have my video uh, in the description of this video going over how to do your sensor analysis. But what it's going to do is take different exposure times with different gain settings and uh, use your sensor analysis to get the best possible final image. This isn't looking for the best individual subframes. It's looking for the final image. It's going to take all of this into account. Now, as you can see, it wants the optimal gain to be set to zero and it wants 626.7 seconds, and it wants 57 of those, which will equal out to 10 hours total. Now, this seems like a ridiculous number, and in a way it is. If your mount is capable of running that much time, another thing to consider would be um, different things like if a cloud wisp comes in and ruins a subframe or a plane or whatever it might be, you're losing a lot of time if you have to delete subframes. So that's just one thing to consider. If you have a mount that's not capable of a time like this, and this is where the read noise limit that we discussed earlier comes into play. So if we take that from 1% and set it to 3%, Notice how much that dropped. And realistically, 3% is not that much. That is really not that much as far as um, extra noise. And if you read this disclaimer, how much can the read noise be allowed to contribute to total frame noise? Lower values give less total noise, but longer exposure times. If we were to take this to, say, 5%, now we're at 120 seconds, we gain a little bit of extra noise, but that's nothing that post-processing can't resolve. Now, let's put that back to 1. So we had an original of 626.7. Let's check out our red channel. So again, it's going to go through different exposure times and different gain settings. And it's going to calculate what we need for the best possible 
final image. Now, while this is running, another thing that I want you to be aware of is you can always do longer exposure times than what SharpCap is recommending. Don't do less because SharpCap notes your camera sensor because of the uh, sensor analysis. So if you do less exposure time, you're sacrificing final image quality. In the red channel, it wants 1,031.4 seconds. If we were to bump our read noise limit up to 3%, now we're in a more reasonable number. If we were to go to 5%, it's even less. Now again, we're gaining a little bit of noise in our final image, but we're in a more realistic number here. There's one last one. Let's uh, measure the blue channel and see what the blue channel brings out. So again, it's going through some uh, exposure times and gain settings. You'll see how it's looking at our histogram. And here it wants 704.1 seconds. Read noise limit to 3%, we're down to 230. 5%, uh, we're at 135. And here's our total number of exposures that it wants to equal out to our 10 hours of integration time. Now, if you're using a cool camera and you're um, building yourself a dark library, and the last thing I wanna put out there is this isn't law of the land, right? You can go more, you can't go less. Now, if this was me, let's just stick with the blue channel. Let's just stick with these numbers right here. If this was me, I am more likely to use a 180 second frame. Okay. And this keeps it consistent because how many times are you realistically going to use 135.1 seconds and your dark frames need to match your light frames. So if this was me, I would put this at 180 seconds, keep it at zero gain. And then when I have, when I go into my dark library, I have my 180 second zero gain dark frames. And again, let's just say that this spit out, you know, 170.6 seconds for argument's sake. I would then still run 180 seconds on that one. And I can still pull my dark frames from my dark library that match. And I don't have to rerun dark frames. So I hope that you found that useful. And if you did, do me a favor, that channel icon that just popped up. Hit that channel icon and subscribe. I don't want you to miss out on any valuable information. Throw a comment in the comment section. Did you find this useful? Do you have any questions? And then check out that next video. Until the next time, clear skies.